Ruchem Abayim B'Shem Hashem. B'Shem Egin Shir Teramais is possible. I'd like to welcome everyone to tonight's Shir, all the men in the men's section, all the women in the Ezra Snoshim, and everyone joining us through the phone and the live stream. Ruchem Abayim. I'd like to give a big yeshe kach to Mr. and Mrs. Matas Abraham for sponsoring tonight's Shir. To the Nishmas Moshe Yaakov and Matas Yerushalim. Oshem Ben Altochai Mishai, Chaim Mendel Bas Yishai Yehuda, Yudis Bas Moshe Yaakov. It is Sarah Basab Yisrael, Alema Sholem. And the Sosu for Shlem of Agitol Bas Dvora, the Sosu of Shiro Hagam Kar, the Chava Mindel, Bas Griff Gechaya, and Rochel Bas Gitol. To have the great source of sponsoring a share, call Egan Shira Tara at 718-851-8651 or email ist at yeshivanet.com. Tonight we have the cover to have with us once again, famous speaker, Rabbi Yonatan Rieti. Speaking of the topic, always when silence is louder than words. My cover to call in a barrieri for tonight's Russia. Good evening. Special thank you to Rabbi Bolden and Rabbi Deutsch for inviting me to share with you again on a very important subject, when silence is louder than words, or even deafening. Oh, sorry. Uh, so tonight we're going to explore the possibility that there's a power to silence that is actually deafening. It sounds like a oxymoron, it doesn't make sense, how can something be so loud if it's silent and yet be deafening. So hold on tight. What's the most powerful medicine? According to Chazal, what's the most powerful, potent medicine? So it's the Gemara in Megillah, I think it's Daf Yud Ches, says, Sama Dukula, the one medicine that trumps them all, Mishtuka. Is silence. Hmm, okay, let's try to figure this out. It's actually a refuah. I mean, you take, you take an actual medication that is designed, whether it's uh, natural healing medicinal qualities or man-made, but it's been designed to actually address a very specific ailment. And here we're being told that nothing, which is what silence is, is the most powerful of all medicines. Actually, Shlomo HaMalech, Hacham Mikal Adam, really reveals to us that where does Ka'as begin? Where does, re- where does Ka'as begin? In my mouth or in my mind? Where does Kina begin? So you look at Seif Haredim, he lifts the mitzvahs according to the parts of your body. So the mitzvah of kina is a mitzvah shatali belev that depends on your mind. Lev usually translates as, as heart. It really refers to your mind. The moment you think something, you feel it. We're not going into that now. We've done that. We've touched on that a few times before. Comes along Shlomo Melech in Perek Yud Beis, I think. No, Yud Dalit, Pasuk Lamed. Chayevasarim. Do you know what is healing for your limbs? Vasarim refers to your limbs. Chaye refers to healing. You know what's healing for your, your limbs? Lev marpe, a healing mind. When you're thinking, can anyone hear your thoughts? No one can hear your thoughts. You can, but it's not decibels. We're going to talk about listening to our own thinking. We're going to touch on that in a few moments. But comes along Shlomo HaMelech, that a lev marpe, a mind actually is a healer. What are the next two words? Ur kavat samais kina. Last next three words. I was never good at math. I failed so many times I can't even count. (laughs) Ur kavat samais kina. Do you know what rots the bone? Now, bones are not soft. They're very hard. Ur kavat samais kina. Jealousy rots the bones. Look at Rabbeinu Yaina on that Pasuk. Perak Yudalad Pasuk Lamad in Mishlei. 
Chayi besarim leiv marpe rave harafuos puulais lemixas hayivarim. The majority of medications will help a certain number of your limbs. Vanezek lemixasam, and it will also have other side effects. There's no such thing as a perfect medication. Rambam brings this, by the way, in his medical writings, that a, f- a physician who actually gives medication has to really know the patient extremely well. Extremely well means the, uh, a full examination and a full understanding of whatever else in the life of that patient might be contributing to his ailment or his illness, like stress, the financial stress. One of the first things the doctor ought to ask his patient, according to Rambam, is are you getting enough sleep? Because a lack of sleep automatically is going to reduce my immunity to germs and illness, and it's going to stress me out to the point where I am actually inviting germs that my body ordinarily is able to resist because I've lowered my own immunity from lack of sleep, or I'm not eating or drinking properly, or dehydrating us for Shalom. So comes along Rambam and actually offers that a physician has to be so expert in the medication that they, they give their patient because they have to understand the patient's body metabolism and how it's going to respond to this medication. So, so he says a person should not give his patients, I'm, I'm, obviously it's not in my notes, but you can check this out in his medical writings that were translated by Rabbi... Dr. Rosner, thank you, Rosner, thank you, Fred Rosner, thank you. Um, I don't remember which Kayla gets in, but it's in one of the 14 volumes, so you've got a lot of reading to check it out. Um, but he, he, he brings there that bef- before checking out medications, the first thing I have to do is check, am I getting the sleep I need? Am I resting enough? Are there other stresses that I can reduce? Uh, is it diet? Is it lack of exercise? And then he goes on to other interesting things, including uh, music and um, aromas that can uh, help a person to lift them up. So it's rather fascinating, but comes along Rabbeinu Yaina and is telling us every single type of refua has side effects. V'leiv hasav loinus, but a mind, a heart, which is extremely patient, chaye kol ha'evarim, brings Vitality to all your limbs. Nikra lev hasavlan lev marpe. Someone who's got a patient mind, we're going to talk about silence, but a patient mind, then that has healing powers. And that's a simple reality. Adds Rabbeinu Yoyna. This is a Rishon. Lefishu marpe legufo vilanafshoi minakas vya yagoin. Savlanus, patience. So I'm translating here as part of patience is silence. That's a chilek of patience. And a chilek, uh, being that is a chilek of patience, he's telling us that patience slash silence is actually a marpe. It's healing for your body and for your soul from kaas and from yagoin, from agony and worries. If you remove kaas from your mind, Thoughts of anger from your mind, you are also removing ra mipsarecha. There's a, an immediate correlation between what I think and how my body reacts to my thinking. My body listens to everything I say inside my mind. Every cell in your body listens to what you're saying inside your mind. Your heart is the first recipient of what we're thinking. That's why the word lev means both. Check it out. Perek Vav, Pasuk He in Kriyat Shema, last week's Parsha by Ischanan. Perek Dalad, uh, Perek Vav, Pasuk He in Shema Yisrael, Ve'ahavta, Ve'ahavta et Hashem Elokecha b'chol levavicha. Love Hashem with all your thoughts. Look at the Ramban who concurs with Eben Ezra. Lev hu hadas. Three words. Lev hu hadas. Lave is referring to the mind. Your mind affects your body. Ur kavat is kina adds now the Rabbeinu Yoyna ain't sarich loima ki mishamin b'saray yarviach minakina. 
your body fat actually dissolves from kina. My body fat atrophies. Kina's taking place over here. It's thoughts that I don't have what you have. And it eats me up. Whether it's your home, whether it's your family, your finances, finances your intelligence, your uh, phys- physique, whatever it is I'm jealous of, those thoughts eating me up is eating up my flesh. So comes along Rabbeinu Yaina and says, the Pasuk is warning me, Ur kavat samois kina. Kina will penetrate the bones to the point it actually weakens the bones and rots them. But he's saying before it gets to the bones, already our body fat dissolves from what we think inside our mind. I'm sorry? A little bit of kina is good for? A diet? A diet? Oh, to dissolve, to dissolve. So the dissolving body fat, there, there, are, be- there are better ways to diet uh, than, than allow worry uh, because uh, Chazal tell us, I think it's uh, in Sanhedrin, Daf Kuf, that um, let davia al-libech, don't let worry. Davia is a, a lotion of uh, daiga. It's a Aramaic for daiga. Don't let daiga go up on your mind. Ki... Gavra Gavrin, there are extremely strong warriors. We're talking about soldiers at war. Katlia Davia, that were killed by worry. It doesn't matter how strong you are physically, worry will actually dissolve body fat, which even if I lose weight, that's not, that's not recommended. Ramb- R- Rambam, uh, t- check out Perak Dalad. There's 21, 23 halachas there in Hilchas Deus, if you want to see maintenance of excellent health, check out what Rambam says there, because he actually offers a guarantee. He promises, he, he guarantees, strange language, this is extreme, extremely exceptional for Rambam to use such a language. If he follows these 23 directives, he will not come to illness his whole life. Achi Askin Harpe until he reaches a very old age. And one of them is exercise, another one is under eating, and the third one is soft bowel movement. Those are the three main items. It brings, I think, in Halacha Yud Gimel, round about, and has test five, I think it brings it twice there. Um, but uh, the point we're bringing out right now is that what we think affects our body. And silence is thinking nothing. I'll explain. There's two types of silence. There's shtika, decibels, you're not talking. Then there's doimem, which is silence over here. I'm not reacting in my mind. Example, Aaron Akayan loses two sons on a, on a, a, a day of exceptional celebration. Vayidaim Aaron. He was silent. What type of silence? He, wasn't even, he didn't even have a hearer. He was silent over here. It's not just a silence where I'm biting my lips. And in my mind I'm saying, I can't believe you're doing this to me. I'm going to keep quiet, but I can't do it. It's really hard. It's really hard. Vayidam Aaron, Aaron Akayan was on that madrega where he wouldn't even allow a thought to question Hashem's justice. Vayidim. It wasn't shtika alone. He wasn't even thinking. We know that's consistent with halacha, that a, a kayan is allowed to be matame for his kroivim. But if it's a kayan gadol, b'shas avayda, even if he hears that his father or mother or wife or children, those according to uh, the hold that a wife is also one of the seven kroivim, some say it's only six, but, uh, and the wife is Drabonan. But, but a- any one of his kravim that he hears has passed away, a child, mother, father, wife, um, uh, siblings, he continues the Aveda. But how can you, you have to do the Aveda Basimcha. How can you do it knowing that a person's lost their closest relative? So Chazal tell us, because the Kayan godless on that Madrig is not going to be Messiah Das, from a Kaddish Baruch Hu, even though he's just received the Surah of the loss of a, of a, of a loved one. 
Aaron Cohen is the first Cohen Godel. Aaron Cohen Vayidoim. What type of 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 doimem? What type of silence was that? Not thinking. Now it's impossible to not think. But there's two types of silence. There's silence from being quiet, and then there's silence where I'm not even angry or upset or resentful in my thinking, in my thoughts. And that's what we're talking about. We're going to get to a much, much louder silence very soon, but that's what we're fer- referring to right now. And David Amalek put it, put it in his own words in, in Tehillim, Perak Samachay, Pasuk base. Lecha Dumya Tehila. To you, Rabban Shalalam, Dumya, Doimem, being silent. Oh, that's praise. Really? When is our silence a praise? <coughs> so I'm going to ask you a question. When do we understand ourselves best? During the day where I'm interfacing at work with co-workers, the boss, the clients, customers, uh, on the phone, um, responding to messages, etc. When, when do we understand ourselves the best? During the day when life is kind of hectic and we've got schedules to keep? Or when we are alone with no one else around except our own thoughts? And now we have a chance to listen to who's inside of me. And what am I thinking? Anger, resentment, bitterness to those that I feel have wronged me? Or where does my mind go? To gratitude? Silence. When things go wrong, not just biting my lips, but not letting thoughts actually eat me up. Lecha dum yasela. Uh, uh, Tehillah. To you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, silence is praise. The, pr- the praise we're referring to here is not necessarily actually actual words that come out our mouth, but the silence of not thinking, Rebbein Shalom, you've wronged me. I can't understand you. This doesn't make sense. Where's the justice? Now, I'm not saying we, none of us can go through that process till we remind ourselves, Kol Avid Rahman al Avid, which instantly, even though it's a Gemara in Brachas, it's actually brought as a halach in Shulchan Aruch. Le'olam yehei adam ragil loyma kol da'avid rachman el tavavid. A person should consistently, le'olam is a very strong language, consistently train himself to respond to when things go wrong. It's got to be good. That's a training. And I, I think if you, if you would agree with me, Nachem Ishkamzu, who's like the father of that statement and his Talmud, Rabbi Akiva, Nachmish Gamzu, if you saw him in Caesar's palace where they open up this chest of supposed treasures and all there is is, is sand and immediately um, he's, he's given the death sentence and what's his response? Called Avid Rahman al-Tavavid. If you're standing next to him, are you, what, what, are, what are you talking about? Do you know, not only is your life in danger, but don't you understand what a Chil Hashem is about to take place? That the Jews are making fun of Caesar with a, a chest of sand? Dirt? And you're saying everything Hashem does is for the best? Along comes Leon Navi and gives Adus to maybe... Don't execute the guy. The Jews aren't that stupid. Maybe this is the sand that, that was used by Avram Avinu when he conquered his nations. So Caesar says, okay, let's experiment. We'll take the one nation that we've had the hardest time conquering and see if it works. And it did. He didn't know this was going to happen. Nachemish comes and didn't know that. But if you were accompanying him as he, as he saw this chest open up, you would say that, what is the... <laughs> How can you read the circumstance that this is perfectly good? It's all taking place over here. It's all starting over here. So I want to talk a little bit about the art of silence. It means that we can actually hear our thinking. And thinking is taking place with no decibels. It's in total silence. Every interpretation that we make of our lives, of who we think we are and our spouses, our children, 
our job, life in general, is really taking place over here. So we're always operating in silence. Even though we talk and we take action, but what really is extremely loud, if you think about it, our personalities are made up of what we think, our attitudes. And all that's taking place in absolute silence. L'chaim. Baruch atah Adonai. Eloheinu melech ha'olam sh'akol. Niyeh b'dvaro. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want to lose time. So where is there a mitzvah in the Torah? This is not a trick question. Where is there a mitzvah in the Torah to actually pay attention to our thoughts, to listen to our thinking, to be aware of what we're thinking? It's not a trick question, but surprisingly, it's one of the mitzvahs that is a tamidi. There are many mitzvahs which are tamidi. I know Sefer Chinuch only lists six. Um, I, I know from uh, Rabbi David Wax, who's been into uh, Rabbi Chaim Kenevsky of blessed memory and many of the greatest uh, gedolim of the previous generation, to challenge uh, the number, but, uh, because according to Rambam, there's over 20 mitzvahs tamidi that take place over here. And if you add up all the mitzvahs of Sefer Charedim and Rabbeinu Yoyna and all, all the many mitzvahs, the smug, etc., uh, you're coming up to over 60 mitzvahs that apply constantly, and they take place over here. I'm not going into them right now, but the one that everyone agrees with is Lo Taturu! Ahare Levavchem Don't follow your thinking. Don't follow your thoughts. Lev Hu Adas. That's the Ebn Ezra we quoted earlier. Don't follow your thoughts. Sefer Haredim offers that whenever Lev is doubled over, Levav is referring to the plural. So Lev is mind, Levav is thoughts. Levavchem, your thoughts. Don't follow your thoughts. Now, it's important to recognize the context of that posuk, which we say every day in, in Kritschma. The context of that posuk is, you're going to see it, the Tcheles, or the Shechina, when, when we pass away. This is the riot that I'm supposed to know Tariq Mitzvahs. Because I can't remember something that I don't know. So first I've got to learn Tariq Mitzvahs. Now that you know Tariq Mitzvahs and you look at your tzitzis and you're remembering as kol mitzvahsai, there are sisei moisam, and to do them. Because that's the purpose of knowing them and remembering them. The next words of the same pasuk. Now that you know the mitzvahs that I'm asking you to think and do, now I can command you, Don't follow your thinking, follow my thinking, says the Kaddish Baruch Hu. The context of the mitzvah, to not follow my thoughts when they're not following Hashem's thoughts, anger, kina, natira, that's huge. Natira is huge. Natira is, in English it's translated, bear, don't bear a grudge. It's b'nei amecha. I think it's Perak Yudtes in Parshas Kedoshim. Round about, I, forgot, I, I didn't check it before, but I think it's... Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Yudtes, Pasuk Yudches. Because the next words in that same Pasuk are... Ve'afta recha kamecha. It's extraordinary. So... HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, there are mitzvahs of the mind, I'm asking you, don't go there. Don't go into Natira, bearing a grudge. Rashi tells us, right at the very top of Daf Chaf Gimel, Amud Aleph, at the top of, uh, of the page in Yuma, it says, Natira, says Rashi, Shoyma Beliboy, he's guarding in his mind the Ra that was done to him, the Loi Masih Medasoy, he refuses to let go. The whole purpose of someone wronging me is to test, will I let this reach my mind and think and think and think about it and talk about it and talk about it and water the weeds and water the weeds and water the weeds. Well, if I water the weeds, what's going to happen to the weeds? Hey, they're going to grow. They'll multiply. And I water the weeds. And before you know it, my body reacts when I think about that person. 
And then I go into all the negative proofs of the things they've said and done, and before you know it, I'm beside myself, and then I sit down and say, just thinking about what that person is traumatizing me, and I go into it again and again. And Rashi is telling us, Natira is a lush and Shamira. Shaima Baliba, he's guarding it, and he won't let go of this memory. Well, guess who is not enjoying a good night's sleep tonight? <laughs> guess who can't walk the streets and look at that person in the face? I, I, I'm, I'm my own enemy. And who's the real me that's my enemy? What I'm thinking in that moment. Lotatu Rachre Levavchem is coming right after Hashem said, remember all my mitzvahs to do them, and now I can tell you, don't follow those mitzvahs which are not mine. I never told you to have netira, or kas, or gaiva, or jealousy. Those are going to eat my body up, and it's going to eat my mind. It's going to take me out of this world. So for me to be aware that kina is an issa, that means when I get the jealous thought pop up in my mind, I've got to be aware that that's not, that's not what Hashem wants me to think. So the mitzvah of lutaturu, by default, is actually a mitzvah to pay attention to my thoughts, to pay attention to what I'm thinking. It's a mitzvah del raisa that's tamidi, to be aware of where my mind is going. And it's almost as though my mind has a mind of its own. I'll bring a proof to you. When, we, when you and I say, my thoughts, my mind, here's my question. Who is my? Who is the my? There's a you inside you that's listening to your thinking. So your thoughts are not 100% who you are. There's a you, your neshama, that's actually listening to what you're thinking. And Hashem wants us to fill our mind with enough mitzvahs and Torah that when we do hear our thoughts, we can filter them. Lut HaTuru is the ultimate filter. And I'm not putting down any filters that are out there. I don't mean that. But the ultimate filter, there's only one filter. It's what I'm thinking and next, my eyes. Ve'acharei Oh, not giving a second look. Don't look first time, but if I do, don't give it a second look. If you get a pop-up in your mind of an image that Hashem says, I don't want you to look at that. Oh, so I'm supposed to be aware of what I'm thinking. One of the biggest mitzvahs, if you want to say that, that way, uh, one of the greatest mitzvahs of uh, character traits that a Kaddish Baruch Hu wants us to emulate in him is Erech Apayim. It's in the Yud Gimel Mitzvahs. It's all over the place. Erech Apayim is a very strange language, really, because Erech means long and up. Af means nostril. Apayim are nostrils. Not long nostrils doesn't sound very complimentary, but it's a, it's a metaphor of holding in anger. Hashem holds in his anger. So when you see someone, he looks about like he's, he wants to explode, but he's controlling himself. He's not getting angry on the outside, but you can see he's angry on the inside, but he's holding in. So my question is very simple. For a human being to hold in their anger and it's visible, how long can you hold your breath for <laughs> before your nostrils let go and it's back to the normal size? A few seconds? How long is Hashem's Erech Apayim? So Mishnah in Pirke Aves, Perak Hey, Mishnah base. Asara Dairais, Me'adam Ad Nayach. There were ten generations from Adam, Harishan, till Nayach. Lohediach, in order to make known to you, Kama Erech Apayim Livnei HaKadosh Baruch Hu. How long is Hashem's Erech Apayim, His patience, in silence, until He brought the marble and wiped out mankind with only one survivor and His family? So that's 1,650 years. Continues the same Mishnah. The Asara Deires Menayach Ad Avraham. 
Lyotia Kamar Chapayim. In order to make known how long is Hashem's Erechapayim, his patience. Because it was only till Avram Avinu came along, and then, Hashem, and then Hashem said, I don't have to be angry anymore. Now, it, Avram Avinu is born in which year? 1948 years from the Bria. But he didn't start going out and teaching monotheism that dulled Hashem's anger and held it back because at last I got someone who's going to put me back on the map. Avram Avinu was 52 years old. That's what Rambam tells us. He was 52 years old. When he went out, Be Pirsum. He learned by Ner for 39 years. That's in Seder Olam. You'll find it in Pirkei Drab Yezah, Perek Havav. He, he learned by Nayak for 39 years. you find it in Sefer Yasha also. He knew him for 58 years. Seder Olam, written, written by Rabbi Yosef ben Chalafta, one of, the, one of the authors of the Mishnah, offers a simon. Nayak, Nun Ches, 58, that's how many years that they actually overlapped and they knew each other. But he studied by Nayak for 39 years. So he was 52 Add on 1,948 years when he was born. Add on his 52 years when he began his career in going around the world, the known world at the time, trying to convince people in monotheism. And what number did you come to? Help me with the math. 1948, 1,948 years plus 52 is? You can take a vote if you like. 2,000. Hashem's era kapayim is 2,000 years. Wow! And it's mostly in total silence. He's holding in, he's not letting it out. Rabbi Chaim Knievsky, of blessed memory, was quoted by his daughter that she heard from many people that um, extended family was saved from tragedy of Machlekes from two eights that he gave to parents whenever they would visit their married children. He said, go in to their home with your hands open and your eyes closed. <laughs> Don't look. And if you do look, keep quiet. Let them figure it out themselves. According to Mishnah Brewer, once your child hits 12 for a girl, 13 for a boy, your mitzvah of chinuch is finished. There are others who tell you it continues. But the essential, the essential message here is, let them figure this out. I'm not giving, I'm just saying a general point. In some instances, maybe they, they need a lot of help, but the best people to help them is not mom and dad. It's not the father-in-law, mother-in-law. Ay, ay, ay. How many families would still be around, full, intact, and not broken and splintered if our mouths were closed from letting out burning criticism that remained in the memory of those children or children-in-law for decades. If only Kairach had kept his mouth shut and kept the kinna over here instead of letting it out over here, if he had been silent to his wife's cajoling and to the kinna that was burning inside him, he would have saved his life his wife's life that he killed with his mouth, his children he killed with his mouth, his grandchildren he killed with his mouth, his children-in-law. He brought about the death of 250 leaders of Klal Yisrael from Machlekes, all because he couldn't keep quiet. Ay, 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 ay. Ten tongues couldn't keep behind their barrier. Chazal tell us, Nitzar l'shayin cha meira. Nitzar is guarding. It's not the same as Shmira. A shayma, you can have one guard at the entrance. But Nitzira is referring to guards all around. Like the Lashon of, of a sieged city is the same th three-letter root. Because a sieged city has the enemy surrounding them on all sides. Your mouth, your tongue, is guarded on all sides by your mouth, but you've got two openings. So your tongue is completely 
protected by your teeth and then your lips. Please, Rabban Shalom, help me guard and not open either of those two so that my tongue doesn't come out and say negative stuff. I, ten tongues, spoke Lash and Hara against the gift of Eretz Yisrael to Klal Yisrael. And most of us believed them. And they brought about the death of almost a million men between the age of 20 and 60 over the next 40 years. But tens if not hundreds of millions of Jews who were never born because of the hundreds of thousands of Yidden that died because of those ten tongues. Ten tongues brought about not just the death of an unborn children, of generations and generations. If it weren't for those ten tongues, we wouldn't have ever had one Tish above, let alone 3,335. All because of ten tongues couldn't be silent. How many more millions of children and dynasties of families would have been born? And it all came because the teeth and the lips let the tongue out, and the tongue shared Lashon Hara. And much of our history, sadly, Chazal identify Sinas Chinam, well, if it would just stay up here, at least someone else might not know about it. But the moment it comes out my mouth or in action, then, then I'm in trouble. Sfarim tell us how talking during tefillah is not, is not good for us. Seif Haredim is very scathing. It says it causes terrible kitrugim. And he's referring to the uh, places of worship of other religions where the decorum is exceptionally quiet. And it says when we talk during davening, we cause a terrible kitrug, Rahman al Slan, because they're, they're, they're in a place of their worship, Lehevel Varik. And, and here we are in front of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, and I'm actually talking during davening. Hamavis v'hachayim biyad lashon. Mishle, Shlom HaMelech. My tongue decides this life and my next. Mavis is death. Chayim means lives. It's plural. Um, I recently found Baruch Hashem, an, a, a Makod I'm so happy to see, in Malas Torah, written by the, the brother of the Vilna Gon. So he brings there that the word Chayim is plural because there's no such word as life in Lashon HaKadosh. It's always plural. So it comes out very clearly. My tongue decides death, but it also decides the quality of my life here and in the next world. Chayim means both worlds. So, silence is good for the body. Shimon Benai. In Pirkei Avos, Perik Aleph, Mishnah Yud Zayin. Shimon Benai of Ram Gamliel. Kol Yamai. My entire life, Gadalti Bein HaHachamim. I grew up amongst the wise. V'loi matzati leguv toif el shtika. The best thing for the body, the body, is Silence. It's very hard to not bring about mistakes with extra words. Oh, silence can actually be a protection of whatever wisdom that we might have. And silence earns protection from evil decrees. It's brought in Seva Midas uh, under Ois Mariva, um, Ois Pei Vav. It's the Gemara as well, we'll see in a few moments. When a person is insulted, wow, what an opportunity. A person is insulted. And he's quiet. Not, not over here, over here. He can get rid of a lot of terrible decrees that were deserving to come upon him just from that moment of silence. And the famous Quran Khulin, Pei Tesamud Aleph, Ein Ha'olam Miskayim, 
the reason why this world continues. What's the battery? Hashem is the battery. Hashem is the power. Oh, ein ha'elam is kayem ella b'shvil misha boilem piv b'shas meriva. It's deserving that this world continues with all the powers that Hashem gives it to sustain itself for one person, because it doesn't say plural, someone who keeps his mouth locked when there's machlekes going on and he doesn't get involved. It's worth keeping the world just for him. And the irony is, we actually beg Hashem every day we beg him every single day, please, Rabbi Shalom. When I'm insulted, when people tread on me, help me be silent. Velim kalai nafshi tidaim. It's not even shtika. Help me that when people insult me or curse me, I should not even think about it. Just move on. Because they're doing me the greatest taiva by removing who knows what from my record and the busha of being insulted or humiliated and me not responding. Whoa, that's huge! V'nafshi ke'afa la We're not finished. Let my soul be like afa to any and everybody. Really? Rabbi Shalom, this is how I end Shimon Esri every day? I don't take three steps back before I've requested that you help me, please, that when people insult me, I should be completely silent, not even think about it. And let me be like dust? Am I, what, it sounds like I'm asking Rabbi Shalom, please, Rabbi Shalom, please, 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 I just want to be 1-800 Shmata Rieti, please, let everyone tread on me and walk on me. I want to be like Af, I just want to be like, everyone just walk on me, please. What's going on? So here's a question. What happens to the Afa after we walk on it? It's still there. When you tread on the ground, does it get softer or harder? Gets harder. Oh. You see, what we're asking Hashem is give me the resilience of Afar. That not if, but when I'm trodden on, I've got this, the resilience of Afar. I'm not affected. My intrinsic value is still real. The whole parasha of self-esteem Please be with me. I got I got Lahana when I saw Rabbi Victor Miller, blessed memory, talk about uh, what a dimmion it is. Because it really is. My self esteem is not necessarily dependent on my estimation of myself. Because I've already got Selah Melukim. Rabbi Shalom has already given us a shtempel. He's already told us you are a reflection of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. It doesn't get better than that. So if I have a low self-esteem, if there is such a thing, if I have low self-esteem, it's a misunderstanding of reality. It's just not reality. I'll give you a simple marshal. A guy takes his, uh, I was going to say a 67 Chevy. There might be a few people here who remember that expression. But we'll go with a 2003 Camry. He takes it in to the... Um, what do you call it when, when you, uh, for scrap metal? The junkyard. Thank you. He brings it in for the junkyard, and uh, the guy opens up the bonnet and says, this is not a Camry. He says, I think it is. No, no, this is, this is an engine of a Rolls Royce. In fact, if you look carefully, you'll see, with all the bumps and scratches, it was a Rolls Royce. Now it's so bashed up, you think it's an old Camry. So, I mean, I've been driving a Rolls Royce all my life, and I thought it was old beaten up Camry. The Benjamin already gave, we are already a Rolls Royce. Bani Martem! Lavshem! Elokechem. Oh, my true self esteem ought to be the reality that you made me. So we actually are asking Hashem, please help me, Rabbi Shalom, please help me to have the strength of Shtika and Doimem. To be silent here and Doimem here for those who curse me. Give me that resilience that I'm able to stand up to the adversities of life and not always an easy marriage. 
not always easy health issues, not always financial issues. Help me have the inner resilience that I don't fall apart. If you want to take this literally, then the deeper meaning, it's not that much deeper, but it's deeper, is that afar is soil. What do you get from the soil? What do we benefit from the soil? Food, fruit, plants. What else? Minerals. People. People. We all, we, we are, we're originally from afar. Well, Afar Tashuv, oh, comes along the Afar and says, you're treading on me? No problem, I will continue giving to you. Plant life, fruits. I'll continue giving you all the dyes you need from all the flowers. And just, just to make it beautiful, and I'm going to give you lots of variety of flowers. I'm going to continue giving all the minerals and precious stones and iron that you can turn to steel and... Uh, wood that grows from the ground that you tread on. So Kaddish Baruch is saying, if you really want to take this to its fuller extent, then what we're really saying, Rabban Shalom, give me that inner strength that when I'm wronged by someone, not only will I not walk away with Natira, remembering their faults, Masih Das, I'll be Masih Das instead, but help me have the inner strength that I will not resist helping that person even proactively. And Chazal, well, it's, it's a pasuk in, in Mishpatim, I think, Chaf Beis, that if you see the donkey of your friend or enemy, it's referring to your enemy, collapsing under its weight, as of Tazav lay, don't, don't walk away, help him as many times as it, as it takes. And we're referring to Davka, someone who I... Would ordinarily want to, oh, not him. Forget it. I'm not, this is great payback time. No, says the Kodesh Baruch Hu, don't go there. I want, I, you know who sent you the enemy's donkey? I did. So I'm giving you an invitation to show your inner strength, your real metal. Oh. So now let's examine when silence is deafening. The first six days of creation took place in utter silence. Even if there were volcanic eruptions and the world is in turmoil as it unfolds, there was no one there to see or hear it. Hashem is creating the whole universe and planet Earth in silence. Why? Because Lecha Dumyas... Tehillah. You know what real praise is? Silence. We're going to see in a few moments what praise are we talking about. Hashem created every element in creation to sustain mankind indefinitely. Please be very careful not to believe in the ritual agenda that's trying to promote that planet Earth is unsustainable. That is Kfira, because the Torah says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu calls himself Shakai, Shin and Dalit and Yud. And Chazal tell us, what, what's the meaning of the name Shakai? Yeshtai be'el kusi l'chol bria. Perak Yud Zion, I think, I can't remember which pasuk, but it's a, uh, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu says to Avram Avinu, Ani kel Shakai is halech l'fanai. Sorry? Besamim. Then later on in Perak Lamad Hay, Hashem says, Ani Kel Shakai Peruve. Be fruitful and multiply. As many children as you are able to bring into this world, do not worry about Panasa. Ani Kel Shakai. You know what that means? Yesh Lel Kusi Dai Lachol Bria. From the smallest ant to the antelope. And rhinoceros, an elephant, and giraffe, I can sustain them all. Don't fall into the trap of thinking this world is limited in its resources. It's not true. That's pure propaganda. 
Do you know that the more technology advances, the more we're able to harness powers that we didn't know even existed? I'll give you a couple examples. Because of technology advancing, we are now able to drill up to two miles beneath the Earth's surface and find completely new oil wells and gas reserves. Thanks to technology, we're able to harness wind and create electricity, water, hydroelectric plants. We're able to take actual sun rays and, and, and turn it into electricity, power, heat, warmth, light. There are powers within the Bria that are invisible and silent. And they are gifts from a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And as technology advances and reveals that there's much more in the Bria than meets the eye, literally, and all this a Kodesh Baruch Hu prepared in the six days of creation. And he wants us to know, I did it in silence because I want you to hear the message behind these gifts. All this chesed was done in pure silence. Chesed kel, kol ayoyim, David HaMelech. What a personality. Doesn't need my heksha. David HaMelech, what was he for the first 29 years of his life before he was anointed Melech al Yisrael? How old was he when he was anointed? He was 29 years old. How did he spend his life till that moment? He was a shepherd. He continued being a shepherd for a while too. He was a shepherd. Now, where do shepherds reside? Out in the valleys, mountains, wherever they find pasture for their flocks. David HaMelech lived with Hashem's perfect creation. He saw, now I'm going to use language that we are familiar with, but David HaMelech saw the sun. A ball of fire 93 million miles away, beating its heat down on planet Earth. He saw water rise, Sham Mayim. It's Gemara in Chagiga, Yud Beis. Sham Mayim. Sham Mayim is made up of two words. Sham Mayim. It's made up of another two words. Ash and Mayim. Aleph and Ash is silent. Sham Mayim is made up of Ash and Mayim. The heat from the sun and the waters on the oceans. It's made up of another two words. All in the same Gemara. Sam Mayim. The water rises. Wait a second. Water is heavy. How do you get it up so high into the sky, into those clouds? And the answer is, Ash and Mayim. Oh, the heat from the sun. And David HaMelech is awed by the rivers and the pastures. We happen to know that the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is absorbed by plant life. And the plant life, the leaves, actually transfer the carbon dioxide into oxygen. Photosynthesis. Here you have a seed silently growing in the ground. And it absorbs moisture from the topsoil, the water from the rains in the topsoil, and shoots down roots. And then a trunk that becomes a fruit tree. Plants, flowers, vegetation. And it's all taking place in total silence. And we are getting sunlight, carbon dioxide, going through all of plant life throughout the world. And it's converting it into cocktails of oxygen. And David HaMelech is enamored when he looks at the veins going up a leaf. And those veins are drawing water from the ground through the roots and the stems, eventually the trunk. And he's blown away by the perfection in the Bria. And he comes to the most obvious conclusion. So let me share with you. Some of you may have made a bracha on bread today. Hamoitzi. Let's do a quick experiment. What do we need for us to be able to have a kazayas of bread on our table? 
What are the different stages? So I'm going to just touch on a few of them. Do we need seeds in the ground? Oh yeah, we need to, we need to plant seeds in order to grow the wheat. But you need, to, you need the soil. Do you agree we all need soil? And do we need the field where the, the farmer is going to till the soil and then eventually plant, plant the seeds? Is the, the farmer doing this all alone or does he need assistance? Oh, you need to plow the whole field and prepare it for growing wheat. Oh, and then you need to harvest the wheat. And then you have to thresh it and go through all the 11 stages of making bread. Do you need rain? Oh, yes, we do. And that comes from water, which comes from the oceans, which is heated by the sun. 93 million miles away, the sun is working in total silence. The rain comes down thanks to gravity. Gravity is invisible and silent. Water is silent. Well, until it impacts something physical and now you hear it. Everything is pure chesed. Chesed kel koil hayayim. All day long. And he's doing it in silence. Why? Rabbi Shleilam, tell us you're here. I know people of the statue of Avram Avinu, David Amala, could see you through the Bria. But why are you so quiet? And then comes along the mountains and force the rain clouds to rise and cause precipitation. And the water comes down into the rivers and brings it to the mainland for trees to grow and provide us the carbon dioxide exchange into oxygen oh, ho, ho. and according to rabbi victor miller this by the way this is a photo it's not real you need the crawly creatures including ants and cockroaches in the topsoil to absorb the water from the rain so it remains in the topsoil you can survive without the ants you need daytime sunshine and in some cases you have to irrigate your fields yourselves there's a lot of people involved over here, and you need four seasons to grow your wheat. Do we need filler? <laughs> you bet we do. Adam Arishan was marking Batoivas Agashem. And it's only when he realized the purpose of the rain coming down to provide food that grows from the topsoil for man to survive that he davened. Avoida, she believed, filler. And all this comes about because of Elohim. Why is Elohim called Elohim? HaKadosh Baruch calls himself Elohim because he is the power of all powers. Ba'ala koiches kulam. Is gravity a power? You see this man falling over here? Is sunshine a power? You bet it is. Is water a power? Sure. Tsunamis. Is wind a power? Tornadoes? Yeah. Hurricanes? <coughs> and there's one power that controls all the powers. Elohim. So I'm asking you in your mind's eye, can you see at the top of a large wall, Elohim, and beneath him you've got gravity, rain, wind, sunshine, rainfall, oceans, rivers, topsoil, mountains. And he's doing this because he is chesed kel kalayim. He's doing this chesed kindness in absolute silence. Why? Rabbi Shalom, what do you want me to cut from all this? Because at the end of each day, no one was there except... The second day, no one was there the second day, but each day Hashem said, after he saw everything, he said, Ki, Toi. This is good. <laughs> if the Rebbe Shalem says it's good, that's a pretty good extra to be Simachon. This is good. Who's he talking to? Well, the Torah is talking to us. This beautiful world was created, and it's pure chesed. It's pure chesed. And I haven't even got into, do you need money to buy the bread? Do you need trucks to bring the wheat to the miller? Do you need the miller and assistance and then pack in sacks and bring that to the bakery? Do you need more than one baker to actually bake the bread and then the packaging and the truck which needs tires and engines and all the people that assemble the trucks? And when you start asking yourself, what's involved in one Kazayas of Hamoitzi? 
probably hundreds of thousands of people. There are many messages we get from this. Interdependence. I depend on others. I can't do everything myself. Gratitude to people all around me in the Jewish world and the Gentile world for inventing the tractor and the combine harvester and the various farming utensils and the factories that build the trucks. We are dependent on each other. Gratitude is reality. But possibly the biggest lesson of all. What is Hashem screaming out loud? And why should, why should I hear him say, I'm here? In what way is he saying, I'm here? Appreciate. 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 Gratitude. What else? That I should know to daven to you. All excellent answers. What is so deafening about his chesed all day and night? Lifting your finger. Walking in a straight line <laughs> requires the alignment of your spine and your muscles, a distribution of your body as you walk, balancing yourself. Who's giving me that power to hold a cup of water? Who's giving us the power to move our tongues? We know the answer, but the question is, what's his message? David HaMelech was so intoxicated by the message. For 29 years, he could not get out of his mind. Kila Olam! Chastai! Your chesed is unlimited. Why? Ki Because you're good! Why are you so good, Hashem? David HaMala could not be Messiah Das from one simple message. Rebbeinu Shalaylam! You... Love me so much. Every single leaf is screaming, I love you, I'm here to give you oxygen. Every fruit, every blade of grass, every ant in the ground, on the ground, every drop of water is screaming in silence, I'm sending this to you as a kiss of my love for you. David HaMalech was so saturated with this message for 29 years that when he was anointed Malach al Yisrael, he had no clue what was in store. His love for Hashem was so strong. Will you be able to find within you the resilience to stand up to a father-in-law who tries to assassinate you multiple times? Chases you for the best part of two years. After you already know that you're Malach. And that you will be Malach. And yet, you're being pursued by your own father-in-law. Will you be able to stand up to the loss of not one child. From Bathsheba, the first child. And Amnon. And then of Shalom. And Adonayahu. And according to Teldos Nevi'im, he lost four more children in the Magefa near the end of his life. Eight children in his lifetime. Where are you going to find the inner strength to know that Hashem has not let go of you? Because he spent 29 years unable to undo what was deafening. I love you. Every blade of grass, every movement of the body, Every time we swallow food and it's doing its own job until it exits the body, even when we are expelling waste from our body, our body is screaming out, Hashem, you love me. It's a pele, it's a pele. It's a pele. The, the good part of the food, the nutritious part, stays in the body, goes to all the cells, and the waste is expelled. It's an amazing mechanism. And that mechanism is screaming out, I love you, I love you, I love you. David HaMelech knew this too well. And that's why he was able to take so much in his lifetime and bounce back every time. 
כי לעולם חסדוי. We are surrounded by this deafening, screaming message. And I don't have to go further than any movement of my body, whether it's blinking of an eye or the movement of our fingers. Everything we do and see and touch and say is simultaneously Hashem screaming out loud in absolute silence, you're doing this because I love you. And if, if there's anyone here who doubts any of this, ask someone who's been in hospital and can't wait to be able to go to the bathroom by themselves, independently. We've all visited or have ha had that opportunity to reconnect to Rebbein Shalom. I, I owe you so much. I can't believe I've not properly been grateful and appreciated things that I've taken for granted until they become dysfunctional or not moving. I will close. There's much more to be said on this important subject, and I apologize I've gone over time. But essentially, the bottom line is, silence is not just golden. I'll close on one person who was not even the biggest tzaddik. In fact, he really kind of turned to Russia. It was not, it was not good for him. He's the nephew of Avram Avinu, Light. He moves to Sadaim. And what was the schus that he was saved? What schus did he have to be saved? He was silent. He had the chance, says Rabbi Desla. I, uh, I never saw this inside. I heard it from two of his Talmudim of Chakim, Rabbi, Yaak, Rabbi Aryeh Kamel, who was my first Gemara Rebbe, and uh, Rabbi Mordechai Miller in Gateshead. He used to give shiurim on, uh, on his Rebbe, that's Rabbi Desla, every Wednesday night. Uh, so I attended that for six years. But I remember he, they both said, I never saw this inside, I don't know if it was ever c committed to writing. Rav Desler says the following, Light, Achilles' heel, was love for money. And the fact that he was silent in the palace of Pare when he could have made an, a very easy deal. Pare, I'm just going to share you information which is worth a lot to you. That Isha is not his sister. It's his wife. Knock him off and, it's, and, and she's yours. And who was the only heir to Avram Avinu, by the way? So he could have made a deal with Light, uh, with, with Pare, and he stood to possibly inherit, according to those that, that he had money, and according to those that he didn't, he wouldn't have, but his love for money was so strong that in that moment, it was deserving that his life would be saved from Sodom. Whose else's life was saved because of his silence? Who was born in the cave? Amoin? And Mayav. Who was born because of Mayav? Rus. Who was Rus the great grandmother of? David HaMalach. And then Shlomo HaMalach. Rus. Oh, David HaMalach. You came from light. Light's chus hasn't finished yet. Because who will be or is born because of David HaMalach? Mashiach. Did light's silence have a ripple effect into thousands of years that directly contributes to Tikkun HaOlam. Don't underestimate our silence in this time, 2023. Here we are in arguably the most difficult generation to raise children. What they are overexposed to and what's being forced in our faces and in our ears. Silence to ever, has for Shalom, second guess of Kaddish Baruch Hu, but our mouths were not designed for silence. They were designed for tefillah, for Torah, for kind words, encouragement. And Rabbi Shalom wants me to use my mouth and say, Rabbi Shalom, please, Karega Yevedu, get rid of Amalek once and for all, and all those who are wearing the mask of Amalek. Peel it away and you'll see all the ingredients, abortion, being promoted, transgender operations and hormones. It's all a malik. It's all promiscuity. It's all decadence. This is all about promoting a lifestyle, no family. Rishus Lakal, freedom to do anything you want. Even Chazal tell us in Sanhedrin, I think Samach Gimel, Yadu 
B'nai Yisrael, she'en ba'avoy dezara mamash. There's no content to avoid the Zara. Then why did they why did they follow it? They only served Avoid Zara, El Alahatir, Arias Bifarhesia. Oh my Avoid Zara told me that this is a lifestyle. Mishkav Zachar. Same gender marriages. Something that's a toeva of Mitzrayim that we're not allowed to go back there because men would marry men, women would marry women with a a, 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 an actual a document of marriage. We're living in arguably the hardest time in world history when it's impossible to remain insular because of the devices that give us immediate access and we hear and see all around us. Our children cannot make sense out of it. They can't even articulate their confusion. They're too confused. We need to be loitaturu achari levavchem to know what to think and what not to think and articulate it to our children and use our mouths not just for silence Bashas Mariva but use our mouths to our Shalom, please I know we should be making our sifas of hundreds of thousands of Yidin to cry, cry out to you please this is a Magaifa a Mabal uh, of which there's never been in world history since the Mabal please Rabban Shalom, our children will not be able to stand up to this give us the power to withstand it and Get rid of our enemies. Bakarav bi amenu. Amen. Barbatiya. So went over time. Shame Irgun Shir Termos is Boston like you with big Asha Kurt or Berieti, but a very inspiring Joshua. But he says, important that it is the for silence is. One time when it's time to speak up, and that's when Egan Shiratari is looking for sponsors to help bring this year to the community. Step up and speak up and sponsor a share. Call Egan Shiratari, 718-851-8651, or email ist at yeshivanet.com. I'd like to give a big yashikach to Mr. and Mrs. Matas Abraham for sponsoring tonight's share. Lili Neshomos, Moshe Yaakovit, Mamatas Yo Sholem, Osher Ben Alter. Chaim Yeshaya, Chaim Middle Bas Yeshaya Yehuda, Yehuda's Bas Moshe Yaakov, Yitzhak Sarah Bas Rabbi Yisrael Aleim Hashalem, and the Shlusha for Fuah Shleimah for Gittel Bas Tvoira, and the Shlusha for Shidduch Chagim Mekor for Chava Middle Bas Rivka Chaya, and Rochel Bas Gittel. Hashikar to everyone for coming. Rochel Anya Ben Akashem, Rosh Hakadosh Baruch Hu Lezakis, as Yisrael the figure here, but I'm telling you, Mitzvah Shenem Adai Noi Chofetz Man Sidka Yagdul Terev Yadir. Thank you.